Good morning, cellists. Uh, here we are on the final lesson on the Bach Arioso, uh, and we also finish off the Foyard study number 33. Today's technicals. Well, we're going to have a nice, simple bow pattern um, and um, also a fairly straightforward scale. Um, and we'll try putting the two together. Um, I'm also going to look at some left hand technique of shifting, moving up the D string. Um, not quite as commanding and demanding as the octave shifts that we did yesterday. Um, okay, so let's begin with the scale. So the scale I'm picking for us to have a little revision on is E major, just a couple of octaves. And it's really to focus on the fact that by using closed fingering, i.e. there are no open strings being used, that we are applying a pattern which is universal, uh, which means that you could apply it to almost any scale. Uh, the only one that you couldn't use it on is C major because you'd have to start with an open string. Um, let's have a look at it then. So finding an E on the bottom, normally that's third finger, but we begin with the first. And um, this is rather a beautiful uh, shape of scale because it's all going to be groups of three notes um, in succession. And you just have to memorise the shape. So um, in each hand position, we're obviously going to use the first finger and the fourth. And it's just deciding which of the middle two fingers we'll be using, second or third, and will there be a stretch or not on the second finger. And it's uh, really easy to remember the pattern. Uh, if you only think about those choices of the middle two fingers, which one, you can think of it like this. In the first pattern, stretch two. The second, stretch two. The third, closed two. The fourth, closed two. And the fifth, closed three. And so there's less for you to think about. Let's have a look at the application. I've got my first finger on an E. Stretch two is the first shape. I move to the next note, which is an A. I've got stretch two for the shape. I move to a D sharp with my first finger, pushing back a semitone there. Uh, the next shape is just a closed two, i.e. no stretch. The next note is a G sharp. And close to stretch back a displaced tone for a C sharp and the final pattern is a close three and then come back down reach out to four on the B but got the close two again way back to half position lead with the elbow I've got a fourth finger on the F sharp close two stretch out for a C sharp and this time I've got a stretch two but remember the stretch is between two and one. So keep two, three and four in normal semitone shape between them. Then rotation and a dramatic move of a displaced tone onto the C string. The fourth finger is now on the G sharp, the same shape as on the G string there. So we've got two, three and four in an ordinary semitone shape. The stretch is actually between one and two. We call it stretch two, but really on the descent it's like stretching the first finger back. So to recap, that when we go up with a stretched shape, one, stretch two, four. When we go down, we still call it stretch two, but it's only in relation to the first finger. It's not in relation to where you're beginning. Four, two, there is no stretch involved, even though we call it stretch two. Um, if you wanted a perhaps more logical way of talking about it, you could go four, two and stretch one but we always refer to that position of the second finger according to how it's placed with the first finger. Now the only other added ingredient for this to make sure that it's really successful for you every time is to know what the first note is in each group. And so you could just take them out by themselves. So we have an E, then we have an A, then we have a D sharp, then a G sharp, and then a C sharp. And if you know what those first notes are and you know the pattern, you've really got a nice solid scale which should sit beautifully in tune. Similarly, you'll need to know the descent notes, that's the first of each three. So the top is a four, fourth on an E, then we'll have four on a B, then in half position, four on an F sharp, then quite a big stretch and change here, four on a C sharp, and again a rotation and stretch for the G sharp at the bottom. And here we have it. Easy. And that that fingering, as I say, is universal. 
generic. It doesn't matter where you begin, you can apply the same fingering. Stretch two, stretch two, close two, close two, close three. Um, if you want uh, another one to immediately compare it with, you wouldn't think that they are closely related, but actually A flat major is identical fingering. Stretch two, stretch two, close two, close two, close three. Uh, so although harmonically they're miles apart, it's got the same pattern, same solution. Uh, and as I say, you can actually apply it to any scale, but those are commonly solved that way anyway. There's food for thought. Uh, it's all about less thinking <laughs> and making it work for you uh, as easily as possible. Now, the bow pattern. Uh, today is just a simple one, which I think we've come across before, uh, where we just move away from the heel, we have a couple of notes at the point, and we come back to the heel. <laughs> really simple but it's a, a quite a nice pleasing sort of feeling to open the arm open your lung there and then return back again and um, two possibilities that you could try using this scale we've looked at uh, as a vehicle uh, you can apply that bowing and you could feel really relaxed by actually doing that bow pattern per degree of the scale so this would take qu quite a while I won't demonstrate the whole scale but like this <laughs> to really think about the hand movement, maybe be thinking about which pattern you're on, what is the next first note of your group of three. Um, and at the same time, trying to bring in the calmness of your breath. You could play it slower than I was just demonstrated there. Really don't be in a hurry um, and enjoy the peace in the moment that you're in, at that moment of playing the note, and the time that you have to really think about the movement of the hand, what the note is going to be, and the shape that you're applying nice and calm. You could then progress um, to the same uh, idea but um, with a little bit more speed in the in the um, thinking if you like. So we could then try it for the group of three like this. <laughs> groups of three it's consolidating what the first note is on the way up which your first finger needs to know to get the tuning and which the first note is for the fourth finger on the way down um, by applying that bow pattern to it and I mean this idea of applying uh, some th something technical to the scale is really really useful because the, basically the scales need to become something that you just feel really comfortable about and then they become a, a vehicle for applying other ideas um, and they help you to push the knowledge of where that scale is into your subconscious whilst you focus on something else. Now with that in mind, my third technical item today is um, looking at, as I mentioned earlier, shifting up and down the D string and actually we're going to be using um, G major scale, but I mean, it won't be using our standard fingering, which would typically be the, the octave that we're looking at. Instead, we're going to be moving up the D string, but not with a kind of scalic solution, but your ear knows the pattern, you know what the sound should be like to rise. And I'm going to add in a little triplet idea to this. So we begin on the G with the first finger. <laughs> and I've just oscillated between G and A. And then I'm going to slide my first finger to the A. So I've moved a tone forward. And again, I moved to where the B was, a tone forward. And again to the C, a semitone. To the D, a tone. To the E, a tone. Stay where you are. And of course, what we're actually practicing there is um, in articulate shifts. First finger is moving up gradually for the first of each of those triplets. So um, in context. And then on the way back. 
back down, we want to be able to practice the one one going down. So we begin, we're already, we're finishing the top of this um, in a standard position, one, two, three. So we're going to begin on the two. Stay where you are, one, two, one. But at this point, we're about to move back. I'm on an E, I'm going to go back a whole tone to a D. Move back a whole tone to the C. Semi-tone to the B. Tone to the A. Tone to the G. I also notice that as you come down the descent like this with the triplet, uh, I'm not lowering my arm early like you might do in, in a melodic line, coming back down from the thumb position arm placement. Normally we would gradually lower the arm, but I'm remaining fairly high with this triplet work uh, on purpose to keep the kind of fluency up the line here. So all together we have then. <laughs> say it's combining various things we're, we're combining inarticulate shifts on the first finger uh, knowledge of this sort of the oral shape of the G major rise and a little bit of work in this register of the D string and triplets and these as a whole collection are preparing us very well for part of the next um, exploration of the Arioso where we are going to be using this register and we will be also looking at triplets one other thought uh, challenge yourself. Try it the other way around so that instead of starting on the G we start on the A. Then move to the B. That's a 3-3 three, three, so that's a 3-3 three, three inarticulate shift. Then it's articulated to 2. And now they'll all be inarticulate from 2. And then from the upper note similar idea uh, to starting with one but by starting on the upper note we're actually now practicing inarticulate shifts from three to three we have one little articulate shift in between, in between from three to two and then it's all our inarticulate two to two to two to two coming back down back to three and three so you, you really got quite a few um, additions to your tool set there if you have a go at that version as well right let's move on we're going to finish four yards study number 33 today and yesterday we'd arrived at a, um, a, a rather nice um, modulation point where we'd gone from an A flat 7 implication to, to um, a D flat solution. Yes, um, um, actually, yeah, so I'm just thinking in my mind, it's, it's, it sounds like D flat but it's actually, he writes it as C sharp. Um, so it's effectively C sharp major with seven chops, uh, but we needn't worry about that. You know the note and you follow the pattern. So we've got a major sound. We just rotate across the string and we take the same pattern, but not quite. It's this time a minor version. So we've got a stretch at the top. And identical now on the G string, rotate again and another minor pattern. And then rotate again to the C string, low in the right arm, high in the left. And this time the major pattern, ready to arrive home, stretch back your first finger to begin on the A major, find a finale. And that's it. So actually quite a nice easy bit at the end there. Really just thinking about rotation um, and the fact that the major ones there's no stretch as we move up into the um, fourth position and the minor ones there is, you know, you're going to have to um, stretch between one and two. Good. So at the very, um, just looking at this whole study then, we have uh, a lovely set of modulations in the middle and remember we're just sort of trying this sort of slight lift of the bow and we're going for articulate and inarticulate shifts. <laughs> Thank you. 
I was just thinking, oh, I've got the wrong glasses on. <laughs> anyway, that gives you some sort of an idea of the whole study and the sort of sense of modulation in there. Right, uh, now let us finish the Ariosa today. Um, so we had got to this marvellous um, peak point with the, we'd, we'd been practising those octave rises and a lovely uh, high register, quite passionate uh, cadence point. Um, And then we absolutely change the mood in this tiny quaver rest where you can reset the bow or retake the bow. Be calm, relax your arms there. So reflecting a little on that, the calmness is the most important feature of this. Um, use a fairly flat bow hair so we can get nice balance, especially after the emotive um, phrase previous to that. Also to help, as so you might have noticed, I use a little open A to, to have a nice easy shift. Just here, but don't let it stand out as an A, it could sound a little coarse or garish. Keep a flat bow hair to help with the tilt and that should come out perfectly fine. And then in the next portion of that phrase, you see that bow stroke that we were, big, big, we were looking at at the beginning of the lesson, down, up, down, up. Um, it doesn't quite follow through the whole of that shape, but, but it's very, very close to that. So here we have to get, here, here it is again. You can hear that, that's a beautiful appoggiatura. Um, um, uh, just it really is a part of uh, C major resolution. Um, which we will hear a harmonised version in the final uh, performance. Um, so we want the lean on those that pair. Now if you notice that I'm not using the whole bow on purpose because I'm going to need this part of the bow for the following fragment that's coming. Um, if, I, if the following fragment was going to be on an up bow then I would probably use the entire bow here. And then continue on an up bow. But actually, I need the following little anacrusis um, notes to be on the same downstroke in order for things to work out the way I would like them to, uh, to create the best oral architecture in the following phrase. And the reason is I'm looking ahead to bar 14. I will want to have an up here to a down on that top A, in which case I really do need to start the upbeat point of this phrase on a down. Consequently, rewinding. I've left myself a little bit of bow, all that I need, to begin this um, next phrase on the continuation of that stroke, but tilted over to the D string. Use a fairly flat bow hair and it will last and speak. Now don't be afraid of the fact we're right at the point and it's piano. <laughs> You might have noticed we've got that little triplet figure that we were practicing with the um, with the bar, with the original technicals at the beginning of the lesson. Um, slightly different notes, but the same idea, and on the same scale point. So we have, uh, as I said, at the point we're going to stay at the point and not attempt to go back to heel. Otherwise, you will spoil the musical shape because we would have a, you know, a push would be ugly. So we're going to keep at the point and then use a little less bow on this down bow, more on the up, a little less on the down, and then more on the up. And that basically by going like this, we're kind of going backwards and forwards and gradually heading back to the heel where we want to be. Um, I mean, in actual fact, you could probably allow yourself a little bit more um, bow length on the last down bow before that top note. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. Mm -hmm. 
Here, this down could be used the rest of the bow. Because you could push through all of this to create the shape. And this is where um, bow management really comes into its own. So you can, without much effort, you can create the musical shape you want because you have really thought about how the bow can make that happen uh, with, therefore for you, less effort. A bit of thinking and it'll all work uh, happily. Um, so we've arrived at the top A. Now you might have seen in there, we've got the stroke down, down, up, down, up. Um, we're sorry, down, up, down, up, down, up, except the other way around. So this is our technical for the day, but the other way around, um, so we have up first, then two small notes at the heel, then a full down again, two notes at the point. And I just realised I've just actually clearly had the wrong way around. Quite good for you to try both. It will start on a down, like our uh, exercise does. And this time you can use the full bow. And I think that's actually quite nice because it comes to a repose point. We've finished with the development section at this cadence point here. And we're about to have a little recap of the original theme. Um, but it's going to be different. It's always nice when you return to something not to play it just as you did before. You know, think of some way that it's going to be different. And I think the most obvious is the, okay, the kind of the idea of being reposed and tranquil, thoughtful, will come back quieter. And yes, now you can see why we're working up and down the D string today. I think it would be a beautiful moment to try this the return of the melody up the D string. Now you need to be sure that this uh, your arm is reasonably raised, like we did in the little triplet exercise going up the D string there. Maintain a fairly high arm in order to, to be able to reach out for that E. And keep the arm high even though you've gone back, and then you can start to repose. So, um, yes, reflecting on this, we've got a nice clean articulate shift, stretch and come back, uh, keeping a fairly high arm there. Uh, beyond that, we have something very similar to the opening. Nice big stretch here for the octave. So it's, it's actually the same finger solution and rhythm as the opening. But um, how are we going to be different? I think just don't go with a rise of dynamic. You know, it'd be really, really easy to fall into that, you know. You know, woo, glorious. Uh, but how about we don't? Could be more effective. and then we'll allow the crescendo and it'll be more effective. Um, so from that top A. You see the bow stroke, it came in there again, down, up, down, up. So I'll show you again. Point, you notice I've got a fourth finger on the G, I'm going to substitution shift to a two. Stretch out. Now don't be afraid of an open G at the end. I mean, quite commonly you might hear or play because you'll want to give vibrato to it, but it can rather change the quality of sound, not necessarily for the better. And at this period of playing, open strings are absolutely there to be used and they, they are part of the beauty of the, the line. I mean, I realise obviously we're playing on different kinds of um, material with our strings now, but they are trying to replicate that kind of gut resonant sound. Um, 
So yeah, don't be afraid of the open G at the end there. You might also just note that it's with the penultimate um, beat, you'll need a lot of um, bow control to save it. So we've got a trill involved, keep a nice steady bow speed and ensure that you leave yourself um, no less than a quarter, maybe a third of the bow for the very final upbeat into the, into the um, cadence points. So let's have a look at that. I was about to speak and then I was thinking, no, let's demonstrate a nice long G going all the way through, allow your breath to go with it. Um, and that of course that last um, upbeat, we don't want to be hurried or choked. If you get too near the heel, you might have a choking sound. Um, and so we're generous of the bow. And there's something in the subtlety of the wrist movement here um, to kind of like almost imagining a, an elliptical shape in order to try and get a really smooth transition round into the final down bow. Okay, so the, the final part of this um, piece from where we looked at today is from the middle of bar 11. side thoughts there is that the very last G you can resonate by vibrating the fourth finger on another register of the G to encourage um, those um, sound waves to be brought out uh, with the G there. Um, there was something else that crossed my mind that I hadn't discussed. Can I remember it? Um, possibly not. <laughs> so we'll have to leave that for another time. Uh, anyway I hope you enjoy your explorations of the Arioso and I shall be uploading um, the complete performance uh, tomorrow. Um, as an aside to that, actually I'd mentioned a bit earlier on in the class today that um, it would be with an accompaniment and what I'm going to do is I'm going to record a backing track um, of the something like that, um, some quaver movement uh, giving you the sense of the harmony underneath so that it has a sense of completion um, and you might like to sort of try that yourselves a new bit of um, experimentation where you could potentially record a quaver backing track for yourself and then enjoy playing the melody over the top of that food for thought enjoy <laughs> 